Do you remember these? Yes, the computer cassette, or rather, audio cassette. It was used, obviously, for audio and in the 70s and mainly 80s used for cassette and for games. Now like this you can see is Ghostbusters. Now I used to wait forever for these to load. It was like waiting for a sloth to complete a marathon. But we did it and we persevered and we waited. So today with today's technology and today's tech, I'm sure we can improve on this. So today we can build these TZX Drenos. Now this is a replacement to your cassette drive. Obviously it's a lot more reliable because it doesn't rely on tapes. Everything is on an SD card here at the back. It has its audio out and also a remote. And then it's audio amplifier here and it's powered off a USB-C here through the Arduino. Now I'm going to show you how to build this. This is again thanks to PCBWay. So thanks a lot PCBWay. And after a short video about our sponsor, I'll show you how to build this. See you soon, guys. So this is just a quick word about our sponsor, PCBWay. This is their main website. They do everything from PCB prototypes to assembly to CNC machining to 3D printing. Just have a look. Have a look at the projects. There's loads of projects on there to build. And this is a place to get your boards built, etc. I mean, amazing place. Super fast. And prices start as little as $5, as you can see there. So that's about it for now. I shall see you soon, guys. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be building this today. So what we need to do, first of all, with every new board, is just give it a clean off. So we'll just put some IPA over it. And give it a wipe over. This will take any grease, etc. off the board. Which should be caused by handling it. It should make soldering easier later. So we'll do the other side as well. Now, what I'm going to do first, get this straight. So what I'm going to do first is install the SD card slot. So the SD card slot has two like little bumps there, which aligns these holes here. It's surface mount, but they allow it to align pretty easy. So it just slots on like that, full size SD card. Jobs are good. And so what we need to do now is solder these corners on here. So I've just switched to another camera so you can see a bit easier. And what we need to do is to just box these two corners up. Same with the other two sides. And then we need to get some solder, the iron. So I just place my finger on the card to hold it down. And then just solder like so. You can see the solder will flow onto the pad and onto the side. Which then holds it in place. Same for the other side. So now that's in place, we'll proceed to solder these pins along the back. So hopefully now you can see all these. Again, you've guessed it, we're gonna flux. Excuse me, my head's in the way of the microscope now, but it's just the way it is, so. Let's just flux this up. And again, we'll get some solder. And we can solder these legs up. Now the ones you've got to be careful of are these ones at the end here. Because these are... Again, we'll just apply some heat and some solder. You can see that these are soldered nicely. Okay. 
Trying to do this at an angle so you can see. They, the two at the end were the worst ones there because they were the smallest. And I think there's one leg there that he's doing. So, saw them legs soldered nice and quick. So we'll just again the flux that up as normal and give it a clean off. Next, we're going to place resistor 1, 2, and 3, which are 1.8 kilowatt. Now the resistors in place. Next we're going to place these capacitors C3 and C1. So C1 is a 10 UF. Now it's marked positive on there. The longer leg is positive so it goes in longer leg first. Like so. And then it just pushes in and we bend the legs up down below. C3 is a 220 UF again longer leg you can see is positive so that goes in first that way and then again we'll just bend the legs back pop it in and bend the legs back so now what we need to do is apply some solder The next thing I'm going to do is to install this socket here. And you can see a cutout on there goes with a cutout on the socket. So that would just be a matter of popping that in place, holding it in place. Now, a good idea for these is blue tack to hold these in place, but unfortunately, I haven't got it at the moment. So if I can just solder a couple of pins in place to hold it while I hold it underneath, it should make things easier for me. So there's the socket done now for the <coughs> audio chip. So that's the socket in place and the caps. Next we have a few other things. We have this headphone socket here. Which fits in here. Like so. Again, it should just slot into place. Really easy. Ready to be soldered in place.
Next, there's a 2.5 jack here for the motor control. I've got some here, so we'll just get that installed as well. Now we've done that, what we need is to put one, two, three, four, five, twelve mil switches on. So we've got play, start, previous decks, and root. Yes. Looking good. We're going to put this Adreno board together here. The reason I've got this breadboard here, it's just a simple breadboard, is it makes soldering the pins a hell of a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is just insert the pins into here. As you can see, it holds it in place. So, what we've got to do is flux along these pins, just like so, and then we will proceed to solder them. We're going to use some pin solder.
get some IPA and give that a brush off. Now that's done, we can just remove it out of the breadboard. And there you have the legs all soldered on. As you can see, it all looks good. And then there's the USB C later, which will be used for powering it on and also programming it. So that's that part done. So 456 are 3.3Ks. So let's get them in. I've already bent these, so I can just slot them in straight in, hopefully. Okay, the last resistor is a 10 ohm one. Oh, and this again, we'll bend it in the bendy tool. Just like so. So you can see now, looking more and more complete. Next, we're going to fit this Arduino Nano. No, so it goes with the USB facing outwards, obviously. And it should slot into place here. So that's it. Push that into place like so. It will hold itself. Now these pins are quite big. So they're going to take quite a bit of heat through them. These are all fluxed up. So I'm just going to go along with the iron and solder these up. Is we're just going to snip these off shorter now watch these now these are very dangerous they literally fly everywhere They're like bullets
Now, white boards, although they look really nice, they are a pain to clean. This was mentioned by Captain Commodore, but I thought they can't be that bad, but I'm beginning to agree with you, Captain Commodore. They take a lot more cleaning than, a, say, for instance, a green one. As you can see, there's like a brown mark there with the flux. But I do tend to like whiteboards. So these are ceramic caps now. Now C2 is a 47NF and it's a matter of just pushing it into place as these don't have positive and negative like the other caps we installed before. So we just need to push it into place and then bend the legs out so we can solder it into place like so. And then just simply add solder again. Now the next one is a 100 NF, this goes into here, same again, it's another ceramic cap, so no positive and negative. So now what we can do is we can pop the audio chip in. Like I said before, all you need to do is line pin one up to pin one up, which is the half moon cutout we did before, and then just hopefully pop it into place. Just into the socket like so and push it down. Simple as that. So here is the LCD screen. It's a 16 column by 2 screen. Green LCD. And it's a 1602A version 5.5. .5. Now to get these working, they need a I2C piggyback. So what we need to do is solder one of these on the back of it. So unfortunately I lost my audio here. But what you basically need to do is solder four wires. One for the ground one for the VCC, one for data in, and one for data clock.
Next, I plait the wires together, just to tidy this up, of course. I really don't like plaiting. Now it's time to solder the I2C onto the back of the LCD. That's why it's called a piggyback, because it piggybacks on the back side. Now back to soldering. Now we soldered the other end of the wires to the main board, to the ground, to the 5 volt, the SD8 and the SCL to match the ones on the piggyback board. And now for some building with Meccano. Well, not quite Meccano, plastic Meccano. So here it is in its full glory. Time for the best part. To pull the protective sheet off, of course, the screen. Will it work? Let's power it on and try. So it powers on. 
blank display. Well, just a glowing display. I don't think that's right somehow, but let's program it and see what happens. So before you start programming, you need to download a few bits of software. So the links are down below. So what I do, we'll just go ahead and download. The first one is Arduino.cc. And what you need to do is go to software and click this one here, the MSI installer. Now there is a zip file and there's also a Windows 10 app, but I prefer this one. So whichever one you prefer, you can contribute, which is a really good idea, or you can just download. I've already contributed before. So for now, I'm just going to click just download and you can see it will download there in the corner. So while that's downloading, we shall go to the other site, which is adrenotate.blogstop.com. Again, the links down below, and this is where you get your firmware for your TZX Duino. So you can download it here, version 1.16. Now the latest one is 1.17, and the link is here. So again, just click here, and it will open, and then click the download link. And again, that will download. Now you've got this, you can open it. And just so just open it with File Explorer and you can drag this file to wherever you want to put it. I usually put it on my desktop. I will put it on my desktop. It'll say replace these files because I've already done this before. So there's the files on the desktop. Next, what we need to do is to load the Arduino software. So what we want to do is to run a new sketch, okay? And then open and then point it to where you downloaded your file and load the 1.17 and it should load up. Like so. There's all the spiel about it if you want to read that. What you do need is some libraries here. So if you open up Sketch and there's manage libraries there, and that will fetch up this little sidebar here. Let's put this in full screen. And what you need, you need a few libraries. Now I've already got these installed because I did this before. There's most of them you can install the latest ones. But the ones you need first are when you open Library Manager, you'll be displayed to this screen. You want to keep this on all and you need to filter your search here to search for the ones you need. The ones you need, I've already installed them, so I'll go through them with you now. So the ones you need are Liquid Crystal I2C. You can install the latest version of this. This is the only difference here is SD fat here. What you need to do before you install this is pull this down and select 1.12 which is here because that is the only one that will work obviously 1.12 is installed so just make sure you install 1.12 on this one the next one you need to install is called timer one again you can install the latest version of that that's fine so once those three are being installed you can then click this button here which is verify and it'll say compiling sketch and hopefully you'll have no errors. No, okay. So the next thing to do is go to tools, select your board. Now make sure you've selected Arduino Nano. Okay. Your port will automatically be on COM1, but you'll find it's always the latest one, so it'd be probably COM4 on here. And when I've got this now, it says Arduino Nano on COM4. I can go to Tools and I can put Get Board Info. And again, it's worked, so that looks okay. As long as you get something like here in the vid, in the PID, and serial number, no, because obviously it's a copy. So also, what I found you needed to do was see the processor here, It'll be selected on the AT Mega 328P. But what you need to do is select it on the AT Mega 328P old bootloader if you're using the ones from like AliExpress, like I am. So once you've done this, then that's all loaded, etc. What you've got to do then is click that one, which is upload. And down here, you'll see compiling sketch. And then it should say uploading. 
and it should say upload in again and hopefully this should work now there you go done uploading so now that's done we should be able to reset this and it should be working or being well so that's how you program it so i'll see you at the next stage okay so we discover like i did and you turn this on it all seems to power on but there's no display you've just got a blue light what i discovered was underneath here see this potentiometer here just give that a turn and we turn it uh, magically your text will appear so you just need to adjust that so you can see it so you can see now i can now read no sd card no file selected so hopefully this is all working i just thought i'd put that in there because i thought oh, something's wrong as usual so i'm just going to put this back together and then we will proceed to give this a test okay so for what better way to test this then do you remember this at christmas but well, we, we didn't test it so i thought we can use this now and we can load some games on it ideal so i'll just put a uh, game on here a tape file we should be able to plug this in now and this should power on now See, there you go, system volume info, and I can just next it, there you go. I've got 1943, the Battle of Midway on there. So, it looks like it's ready to go, this does. But, if you remember, we never tested this, did we? So I'm just going to show you what it does. Now, you can see there, I've got the screen on there. So, I turn it on. As you can see that's not right is it so we're gonna to have to quickly take this apart and see if we can fix this issue before we can test this because i've got nothing else to test it on so let's carry on with this Okay, so I messed around with this. I've tried whatever I can at the moment. I've tried before in the CPU, the ROM. It's not doing anything, unfortunately. <laughs> One of these videos again, isn't it? Oh, it's a nightmare. Well, what I'm going to do is next video, we'll probably build a diagram for this so we can run diagnostics on it and see what's going on. So, we need to get some parts as well for this. We need to order some new memory chips, etc. I've got some CPUs. I've got some Z80 CPUs, but I don't think it's a CPU. If it's a ULA, then that could be a problem because I know these are getting hard to get hold of. There you go, playing. So, it is working. So, it is seen to be working, seen to be loading. The take count is working, etc. So, all looks good what we need to do is just get one of these spectrums working either this plus unit here we got or this thing here that we built the super harlequin 
Because obviously if we can get this built here, the Super Harlequin. I just need to spend some time troubleshooting it. So I just wanted to give this final word. Because tomorrow it's been one year. Yes, on Monday, one year on YouTube. Now, it's been a massive learning experience. I started with just filming my hands. I found it very awkward going on camera. Now I'm, I'm quite finding it okay. And hopefully I'm coming across better to you guys. Now, I want to be able to get through this without obviously help from my friends. So Captain Commodore, 8-Bit Retro Refix, Joe Sib, all of those guys, you know who you are. If I didn't mention you, great. And thank you for all your support and help throughout this year. I mean, I've learned a lot of you guys. Also, without support, a PCB way. Now, again, thanks for sending me these stuff because it helps me keep the channel going and gives me stuff to do every day. Although, I've always got stuff to fix because nothing seems to work nowadays, but that's part of YouTube. Like I said before, I don't plan these repairs. I do them as I do. And if they don't work, they don't work. And we'll just carry on with them. Like I said before, as I was doing this video, you saw many things went wrong. I had corrupt audio videos. I had spectrums that didn't want to work. And speaking of spectrum, can you see on this screen now? Yes, it's this one. The one we couldn't get working, it is now working. What I had to do was, what did I say in the video? It wasn't the CPU. Well, I took the CPU out and I thought, I'm going to put a socket in because obviously it makes it easier. And I swapped the CPU with a new socket and guess what it's working well 50 percent working lo and behold keyboard doesn't work so i couldn't load any games anyway on the arduino so i've ordered a membrane for that and we're going to get that fitted next video and play around with the arduino so hopefully you've enjoyed the video I didn't quite make it to 600 subs, which I wanted to. I got to 599, but 599 is not that bad. It's close to 600. So if you're new here and you've watched this video for the first time and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and also comment down below. And don't forget, give me a thumbs up. And happy birthday, Retro, for you. See you all next time, guys. Bye.